here at GrowPro, and this is something that everybody's been talking about, whether they're just getting into filmmaking, whether they're professional filmmakers, for some reason this just captured everybody's attention. And when I asked, what do you think is cool, a lot of you uh, who are watching live, uh, people were just saying, the GoPro, the GoPro, the GoPro. So I came over here, and I have to admit, it's pretty cool. So check this out. This is a, this point of view, this crazy stuff where you're afraid to put the camera somewhere. You're afraid that you know it, you need it to be light, you need it to be easy, you need it to be really attached, and that's what these guys do. And so this is a tiny little camera. Look at this little guy. So a tiny little camera here. Um, this is an inside of a, a waterproof rig, or, or it can be a waterproof rig. You can get ones for it. Uh, it it's recording just to an SD card, um, and, and so and it, and it's 720p, 1080p. It's, it does all of those things, and you can attach it to anything. Come here. Look at this. Check this out. So. Here you can see over here the little suction cups. Now those, that, that little, that little, that's what it comes with. Okay, so you got a little suction cup that you can throw it on. So you can put it onto your car, you can put it onto your bike, you can put it onto your helmet, you can put it onto your surfboard, you can put it onto all kinds of stuff and just capture that in HD video, capture that experience. Now a lot of the stuff I've been showing you has been pretty expensive. This isn't, it's $200 here at the show. I'm not sure what the regular price is, but I, there's a lot of people that I know that are just saying, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I'm gonna buy one because it's just a very, very cool little camera and I think that I, I might be coming home with one myself. Okay, we're here at Panasonic, and one other camera that you just have to see, and I really am glad to see Panasonic kind of going down this direction. As I said in the past, I've been a little rough with Panasonic about some of the chip sizes and everything else. Well, they made me wrong here. This is a four-thirds MOS, uh, is what they call it. And, and if you look here, what you're seeing is two-thirds inch chip. That's the, that's the size of my, uh, my F950. It's right there. Four thirds is there. 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter film is there. So the four thirds is getting a long way there. Now, what does that mean for you? That means better light sensitivity. It means that you're going to also have, uh, you know, a, a much shorter depth of field. So you're going to get that film look that a lot of people really want. Uh, and, and this camera is, it's, it's on its way out in December, so it's still going to be a little ways. But check this out. Come here. I, mean, I really think they've done a lot of right thing, a lot of things right here. Interchangeable lenses, so you're going to be able to put Canon, Zeiss, Nikon, uh, Olympus, any kind of, any, with any kind of, with an adapter, you can put anything you. On there. You can even put the little Lumix on there. And so you've got this four thirds uh, sensor here. You've got um, audio inputs here. Come over here, come over here. So you have, uh, you've, got the, you've got audio in, you've got SDI in, or SDI out, uh, you've also got HDMI out. Now this is like a block of soap, I mean this isn't really a working version yet, it's not coming out until December. But, but it gives you a lot, it gives you a, a, an idea of the form factor. Now this is recording again to SDHC, so you're, you're really going to get, you know, the standard outputs, not the P2 stuff or the S by S stuff. It's really just a, a nice camera to put together. Now here's what I think that, that Panasonic's doing right that I think Canon missed, is that they figured out that they had a four thirds still camera that they could turn into a regular video camera and people will buy it. And, and I think that Canon needs to do the same thing with their, with, their, with their 5D chip. I think that they're missing a huge opportunity and I think that Panasonic's gonna, gonna eat their lunch if they're not careful because this, it looks revolutionary. I think we're gonna see some very interesting and, and, and a, uh, very interesting excitement and a lot of great stuff come out of this if it, it, it lives up anywhere near to its potential. So we're here at Canon, and uh, they've released, of course, this is NAB, and they've released some great new cameras. So what you have here is the XF300 and the XF305. Uh, they're, they're almost identical uh, as far as the cameras go. Now they are uh, one-third inch processors. And, uh, but what you have here is the, one of the things that they've done is they've gotten, uh, you know, they're not doing tape. Uh, they're, they're actually doing compact flash. So it's recording compact flash, and one of the things that they can do with that, you, can, you, can have, you have two of them here, so you can put two. You can put two compact flashes in there, you can put two 32 gigs in there and, and, and take care of it, but they're also faster. So one of the things that Canon can do that, that we haven't seen uh, in, in the past is the, uh, is the ability to um, record a higher bit rate. They're not doing the 35 or 25 or 20 or whatever a lot of these used to do. They're doing 50 meg megabits a second, so that's going to give you a lot more quality, uh, and that, that makes a big difference when you're talking about doing green screen, when you're doing those kind of things. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's, it's a nice little package, um, a nice little put together. Now, you're probably wondering what the difference is between the 300 and the 305, and, uh, and, and what, what you have here is you've got HDMI out, of the 300, so the 300 is a basic three, uh, HDMI out. Now, if you're in an ENG setting when you really need a uh, time code and you might need uh, HDSDI, uh, then you need, you're, you're gonna need something a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can borrow this from this guy for a second here, and what you can see here is that what you have here is the, um, you have the extra pieces here. I'm gonna find it here, there you go. On the side here, you have Genlock. So here's your Genlock here, here's your HDSDI here. 
um, and then another video out. And so that's going to let you, uh, you know, really go in if you need to get all the cameras working together, if you need to get the HDSDI, you know, uh, out, because we need HDSDI. So, so this gives you a little more. This is $6,800. If you want that extra, it's going to be $8,000. But otherwise, the cameras are just the same. It's a good, solid product from Canon. So here at the Sony booth, and there's a couple new cameras to take a look at, and a couple within uh, within our price range, within the the the, uh, the stratosphere, and and so uh, so what you have here is this is the M MC50, the HXR MC50. Now it may look like a little camera, but it's really designed with some of the more some more details that are really designed around a professional acquisition situation. So uh, you know just the, the form factor. It's designed as a, as a small camera. Now I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure why they designed it this way because it's a great camera um, that is a form factor that a lot of us would want to have, and a lot of us want to use uh, for web delivery. Uh, I think that a lot of times that's what we're thinking about when we're thinking about these little cameras. Unfortunately, it's interlace, which means it's not going to be very good for web delivery. So, um, so I'm, not, I'm not sure, I, I, with all these little cameras, they all seem to live in this little interlace world uh, in Sony, and it's really unfortunate because the chips are amazing. Um, the, the form factor is amazing, and, and it's, just, it's, it's frustrating that we don't get a good progressive camera there. Now, on the other side of that, though, I'm very impressed with this. So this is the new NX Cam, so this is the, um, and, and check this out. So we, I think we showed a little bit of this in an earlier segment, but this has got a lot of the form factor that you'd have with an EX1, for instance, uh, which we love. Um, but it, it also does a couple things that we really like a lot. SD, so you can now put SD cards in, so none of that S by S stuff. And we, you know, it, it's great to, uh, that everyone's moving away from the proprietary formats. Everyone's moving away from that, that process. And, uh, and, and allowing us just to use cards that we can buy anywhere and, and plug them in. And now the other thing that I like about this is that you have both HDMI out and SDI out. So you can really, the street price on this is about $4,000. I think the, the retail is about $5,000. And uh, it's a great in-between. I used to say that there was kind of a no man's land between about $1,500 and about the $5,500, $6,000 that the EX1 is. And I think this fills that, that gap really, really, really well. Uh, it's, it's a third inch chip, so it's a, it's a slightly larger chip and, and, um, for this type of camera, which I think is great. Um, it also comes with a controller. I really wish we could see one of these for the EX1 and the EX3, um, but this is a great little extra controller that you can attach to this camera, so you can, you can set it, you can kind of basically, you would attach it to the side of your tripod uh, or, or, or one of your handles and be able to just kind of grab onto it and, and have a lot of fine control without having to grab, lunk onto the camera. So it's a great little controller there. I, I think it's a, this is a, a really uh, a fantastic entry into the Sony market. I, this one is a good start, I just wish we'd see progressive scan. So again, um, these are, this is the Sony NX Cam. Okay, so we're here at Lockheed Martin, and uh, this is, I just had to show it to you, it's, it's a little bit of a, you know, this is kind of the stuff that you hear about happening, you know, at the, at the front lines. Uh, this is a Dragonfly, and so what this has here is a little HD camera. So this is a HD camera, you have a little controller down here, and, uh, and this guy carries his HD camera up to 600 feet away, and so you can kind of do little previews. Now, what it does is then wirelessly sends back the data down to here. So this is the, you can send it to an iPhone, but you can also send it to this little uh, receiver. Now, all the time, it's not only just sending the video down, it's sending all the telemetry data. So it's like exactly when this was shot, within five or six feet of where it was shot. So that, that, that you can really know exactly where you're going. This is a, this is, you can preview things, especially in a military situation. You can kind of preview where um, issues might be uh, without putting people in, in harm's way. So it's, it's a very, very interesting use of video. Now you can get that HD video back, reattach it uh, if you want to, to re-grab re, re that telemetry data, but the SD version is going to come down in real time so that you can actually see what's happening on the ground, over the hill, over the wall, somewhere else. And so it's just a fascinating use of video, and this is all the kind of stuff you see here at NAB. Now this is a little expensive, $30,000, but you know, nothing but the best for our government.